Hello there, I'm Mikko from the Body of Christ and welcome to another Leadership Reflection. Today we will be talking about uh, following man versus following God, or man systems versus God, godly systems or God systems. And um, this is important because in leadership, in this reflection at least, we are learning a lot about leadership and different systems that are work around that. But we want to separate the systems that are made after the wisdom of this world from those that actually adequately represent the kingdom of God and how things are done in the kingdom of God. And last time we talked about uh, teaching and how the same sort of principle applies in the ministry of a teacher. And if you're interested in that, I recommend watching that because that might help you to, to relate this subject as well. But anyway, let's continue on the matter right now. So, man-made systems and godly systems. First of all, I would like to propose to you the idea that there is a godly system. Uh, because that is kind of foreign in some contexts. And sometimes people think that because we're following God, we have no frameworks, no systems at all. It's just all random. But for example, when God created the world, the circle of earth, he set up systems in place. He set up the seas, he set up the mountains and the earth, he set up the sky as well as the uh, stars and the moon and, and sun and so forth. And he really set it up like clockwork at least the sun, uh, sorry, the sky, because that's exactly how it behaves. But um, but things had a role in it, and things were meant to operate in a certain fashion, not randomly, but in a kind of cause and effect way, you know? Uh, so that's present there. So why in the kingdom of heaven, Let's say above here is heaven. Why would things in the heavenly kingdom be much more random than what he demonstrated in creation? I think it's not meant to operate in an orderly manner. Of course, the logic might be very different than here on earth, though. But I would like to propose that there is a heavenly system. For example, what, what Moses said, Moses saw in the mountain, he was looking here at the mountain as God was showing him the image of the temple of God in heaven and how things are arranged in the temple of God. And he said to make this tabernacle that is a tent after the manner of what he saw in the vision. So bringing a heavenly blueprint to an earthly existence. So that's an example of a godly system, specifically modified from a heavenly source and implemented in the natural realm, of course, with the natural limitations. So it's not exactly the same. But um, but there was a certain method, methodos, methodol, methodos, how Moses implemented everything and how things were supposed to function, for example, in the priesthood. And the book of Hebrews goes very, very deep into this topic of Jesus' priesthood and the high priesthood of Jesus and how that operates in the heavenly temple and how they, these things reflected that ministry. But anyway, that's a side topic as well. The point here is that there is a godly system. Now, how do we recognize a godly system and um, how do we separate things for the mad may system and why would we do that in, in the first place? So oftentimes it seems like uh, this kind of pattern arises that there is some big ministry or big corporation or something that sets up this standard of here's how we do this. We do step one, two, three, and four. And this is our organization structure here, and um, and these are our our ten commandments, do's and don'ts, you know. 
and the world has its own systems and uh, churches and other places have their own and sometimes those are mixed but here for example the humanistic law or the civil law would be an example of a man-made system it provides this law framework and expects you to kind of go under it and operate under it and what that unfortunately oftentimes causes is that people when they join the organization or in case of governments are born into the organization um, they start following the system and let's say this was originally a godly system so god gave this man here this pattern uh, like he did to Moses and he replicated it on earth but um, he did the same mistake as Moses although Moses didn't make the mistakes it was his role at that time that he did not provide or these guys did not acquire a direct relationship with God so instead of following God they are um, following a system that kind of models the principles of God but that's really not the same thing first of all it's subject to earthly like natural limitations unlike God and uh, otherwise it's it's really it's not a personal relationship with anything it's just following things and for example let's say this person has a calling from God uh, but that calling doesn't quite fit in the current framework there's no interface for that so what happens is that if the system is very rigid um, the calling gets rejected it's not applicable here go away <laughs> instead of for example in churches we see that someone might be um, called to the ministry of a prophet but the modern churches don't have prophets in them so when the person even if they can recognize their calling and that's a big deal uh, they go to the church eldership here eldership sits here or their pastor or whatever and they present the idea that I would like to operate as a prophet in your church but then they're gonna say if they're a free rigid system here they're gonna say no that's not how we operate how about you go open the door for the guests instead you know so people have an invitation but I mean that's <laughs> It's a very different thing, opening doors and operating as a prophet, you know. So their calling does not get fulfilled if they're under that system. But the system can be very helpful as well. Like, for example, we've been discussing the IPO process, which turns issues and problems into opportunities. And that system or that method of... Okay, I don't use that word anymore... Uh, that method is very powerful in just doing that creating opportunities actually giving place to people's callings if operated correctly and that sort of thing so it can give great like increase but if it's rigid then it can uh, hinder the kind of customization of people's callings um, so those are kind of the benefits and the dangers of, of, of operating within a system. Now, what should we do then? Should we discard the systems and not operate under any systems? Then we don't get this power here. Or should we go under the systems even though they're rigid or not godly or something? And then we give up the callings and the what God wants to do in the people's lives. So neither of those options is very good. So what should we do? And here's a proposal, and this works in a similar manner as the example in teaching earlier. So, and in large organizations, this might be more difficult, in, but in smaller organizations, this should work. Depends on your leader. Um, 
But I propose this, that you utilize the systems, for example, leadership here, certain frameworks and systems and procedures, for example, certain expectations, certain culture, um, certain processes for doing things. You take this and you, as a leader in this case, now let's say you're a leader, you take this information in, but you apply uh, the wisdom of the Holy Spirit into this matter and let them show you, like, for example, the system would say that in this situation, um, do this. So when somebody, I don't know, is not honest, put them out of the team or something, you know? But the Holy Spirit might override that by saying, hey, I know this, this says this, but this is how it's done in the kingdom of God. Do this instead. So you kind of tweak the system based on the information that the Holy Spirit gives you. And the best way this works is when this system here is given by God and represents on an earthly realm, the kingdom of God. But of course, Holy Spirit is also from the kingdom of God. So Holy Spirit can show you things that the creator of this system or the person like Moses who brought this system into earth didn't then understand or overlook or didn't cover but the Holy Spirit can cover those and fix those issues. So he will give you a revelation about the system itself and give you like a personal understanding of, of how the things operate. So for example, if I teach you about the IPO and I say blah, blah, <laughs> whatever, that you should have teams. The Holy Spirit can give you a revelation and actually show how those things work. Uh, so let's say you receive revelation from the Holy Spirit. Then start following this revelation instead of what I said to you. Don't follow me. Follow the Holy Spirit. Let me just be a teacher. Even if I'm a leader, let me just be a minister to facilitate what the Holy Spirit is doing rather than you like directly going under to, under everything I say. Because if you receive revelation, then it becomes your understanding. So now, in your mind, say this is your thoughts, the Holy Spirit is starting to create in your mind this system, how he wants it to look like in terms of your ministry. And maybe teach it to others if, you're, if your ministry is about teaching. And he will show you things that are present here, but also things that, that are not present. And he might apply some and leave some out. But afterwards, when you speak about this system that the Holy Spirit showed to you, it is a system that the Holy Spirit showed to you. It is not the great, I don't know, great bet that is system, you know? No, it is, it is something that God gave to you even though it might resemble something that Peter showed here, you know, to you, and what Holy Spirit witnessed or showed more of. Uh, because, you know, Peter got it from the kingdom of God. So he got it from the Holy Spirit. You can get it from the Holy Spirit. It's Holy Spirit systems, at least the godly parts of it. So give credit to God <laughs> instead of giving credit to Peter. Of course, you can mention him and and say that he was really inspirational in this and like Holy Spirit witnessed a lot of things from this but not really going under this because what I see often or at least sometimes is that we have a mighty name here and a mighty system and teachings and these ma names might include like you know Maxwell or I don't know some other great preacher like Andrew Womack, whatever. And like, for example, if you work in Andrew Womack ministries, whatever. So 
the 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 risk there is to say that now I work for this so and so ministries instead of I work for God. So it's like when someone asks you something like, "Hey, how should we do um, deliverance in our church or with my friends, whatever?" And he asks you this, and you receive that question. But because you don't have identity of your own, you go, well, Andrew Womack says that you should do this. Now, I mean, that's okay. You can be a relay of information. But what you're also saying, if if that, let's say that answer doesn't work. So he comes back and says like, well, we tried that and, and the demon kicked our butt or whatever. <laughs> Uh, and then you're like, oh, well, go talk to Andrew. <laughs> I'm not taking responsibility. You know, so you're kind of relaying, relaying everything to this person here. You're removing yourself from the picture. Also, you're removing everything that God could or would want to do through you. So it's like when Jesus said, when Jesus' disciples came to him and said like, Dude, these guys are getting hungry. You should send them away so that they would get something to eat. And Jesus was, you give them something to eat. So it's kind of a similar situation. If someone comes to you with a question, you give them an answer. And you take personal responsibility for that answer. And even more importantly, um, people often or easily have the tendency to neglect following God because they're following man, and they think it's the same thing. So, for example, someone's working in this ministry, let's take Andrew Walmart Ministries, for example, uh, they're doing some, I don't know, phone service, I guess. And they're just following the system, the procedures, and so on and so forth. But they're neglecting to hear the Holy Spirit. Of course, they probably teach that. In there, so you know, not the most practical example, but just just the name. Don't care about it. Uh, what what's that then? Then they're really not following God in that situation. They might be doing some service to the kingdom of God incorrectly, but wouldn't it be wouldn't it be much better if they would keep the line to God open and let God speak to them? And speak to the person that's on the other side of the phone. And prophesy to them, heal them, and deliver them, whatever. But operate in the power of God instead of power of so-and-so ministry. Or so-and-so person that's famous. So, let's try not to hide behind these famous faces. Or these famous systems. Hide the responsibility. But instead, follow God. But also understand that following God and being part of someone else's ministry or some system or whatever, those are not mutually exclusive. You can do both. Just keep your priorities right, you know? And I think that's enough for this leadership reflection video. Um, it would be interesting to hear your thoughts. I know this is not the most well put together idea, but I hope you get it. And I hope the Holy Spirit gives you something from this and teaches you something. And actually, I feel like praying right now. Uh, Holy Spirit, I ask you to open your, your whole watching eyes and heart and give them revelation and actually show and demonstrate in this moment how this functions if they have not experienced this earlier that you will teach them something here that I didn't say directly and you will connect it to other things and that you will do the teaching here and help them understand that it's you who are speaking to them and not not some Mick or someone else. But I ask you to give them this experience and in case they're not so familiar with you yet. Uh, I ask you to lead someone into their life that 
can help you help them to know you better if you can kind of speak to them so well anyway i guess we'll see each other on the next video and in case you have any any thoughts questions ideas share them in the comments or otherwise